Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on a telegram channel called Electric Being. I found an interesting theory there. Maybe to most of you this is very unreasonable, but I think it's worth talking about. Please check the description to know more about the channel. There are many interesting topics on the channel, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Not only is there multiple evidence of harnessing electricity in our past, but also of multiple creatures in our realm. The tiring narrative of knights being chivalrous saving the lady after jousting, plus capable of wearing their armor days on end, sounds like BS after we look into subjects of the old world, like old forms electromagnetic weaponry, to cryptids, giants, etc. It is said when parrying with flambered swords, unpleasant vibrations can transfer into the attacker's blade. These vibrations cause the blades to slow contact with each other, because additional friction is encountered with each wave. This is X-rays of Bronze Age sword grips, intricate designs indicate some sort of tech. The question is, why? And, once you start looking into the actual examples of the armor, you start asking question of how it was supposed to work for a person inside. We don't need to focus on weight, also inaccurate, but most importantly, it's human physicals versus armor, that should be looked at. It's not the weight, it's armor design and the stories, that raise multiple questions. Knights are depicted almost always wearing their armor, never leaving a castle without their armor, even for a week or more, traveling to the battlefield, they'd never take their armor off. It's even said, in certain cases, servants would pour water in the knight's armor, notice the slits, to compensate for the lack of bathroom arrangements. This makes no sense for another human being with clothes underneath to be hoisted in water in such a state. On the other hand, seeing depictions of other entities using suits as an exoskeleton, one might enjoy water. These knights slept in their armor, and if while asleep a squire would chance to touch one of them, he was killed immediately. It seems that armor and swords used some type of advanced technology and, even in certain cases, armor was a bodysuit for other entities. Human knights existed, but it's evident there's much more to the story of knights than we're told. Especially knowing who calls the shots in our historical narratives. Many of those suits defy conventional explanation, and we're not even talking about what technological tools they had to use back then to make all that. We know our ancestors were capable of acoustic levitation that could travel for miles. This weaponry isn't out of range by any means. The more control they have, the less we history we retain. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. None of these buildings were carved in stone, but are the remains of a meltdown event. The rock formations surrounding them are the result of the viscous melting of these buildings, which then cooled down from the mud flood. These weren't made by primitive people who just enjoyed living deep underground or in the mountains, carving these massive intricate buildings with chisels and pulleys. They're the remnants of the old world, of the prior inhabitants. There was a meltdown of the Earth's grid, by a plasmic event, or unknown next factor, causing destruction throughout the entire realm. By comparing the pockets of survival, 
or leftover buildings of the old world with these supposed carved and stone ancient buildings, we see very similar styles and elements. We see they were made by these same masters of implementing free energy, electromagnetism, sound, frequency, vibration and plasmatic somatics throughout their architecture. There's so many questions and answers to be found in regards to our staged and erased history. Our world was once a majestic-like paradisiacal garden that most people could never fathom. We're now in the post-apocalyptic era. These plateaus and many mountains are not rock formations, but remnants of giant trees that were cut down. Titans and giant creatures also roamed the earth. Trees reached beyond the clouds and the largest was the tree of life at the center of our plane. They were interconnected through their root systems, creating a living network on Earth as one large organism. Life on Earth was silica-based, not carbon-666 based. Silica, like crystals, stores information and conducts energy. Supposed caves you see, are actually the below-ground roots, while many rivers are the above-ground roots. The movie Avatar shows you this, even showing us how our consciousness was projected through our avatars from our true bodies plugged into the matrix. This is happening to us now, our carbon body is an avatar for our consciousness, while your real body lies above the waters of this terrestrial realm, called Earth. Welcome to the post-apocalyptic era. This realm once resembled a paradisal garden as shown in Avatar, whereas today, our world would be seen as a desert wasteland. If the legends are true, then, our world tree or pillar was cut down. It could be viewed as the navel of the womb-like structure we live. I think what happened is, the umbilical cord, or tree of life, got cut off, and, with it, the flow of nutrients, carbon dioxide, oxygen, etc., destroying our biosphere, the antediluvian world. The ether had different electromagnetic properties compared to today and was so energetically present, we got all we needed to survive directly from breathing it in and living in it. In other words, present Earth is a failed experiment or at least something unexpected happened to the womb. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.